welcome to a new episode of Roma Custom Bike. In this episode we're going to build a compressor for the rear shock absorber for a Softail Harley Davidson. Um, as you can see inside the shock absorber there is a, a pin that you need to remove to be able to access the inside and service the shock absorber. To do so we need to compress the shock absorber and uh, we need to build something like this uh, so that we can insert the, the shock and uh, compress it. So let's get started. So to build this uh, compressor we're gonna use a bunch of scrap material. The only thing I've actually bought is this um, threaded bar with a couple of bolts onto it and uh, all the rest is scrap material. As you can see here we use rebar and a bunch of uh, construction side leftover materials. In our case we're gonna use a piece of leftover uh, sheet metal and some bars I actually found in the trash. So it's a really economical way of going about building this thing. We're gonna uh, build another one of these for your pleasure. To start we're gonna cut to size uh, the pieces of metal that we'll use for the structure that holds the bolt um, that will allow the threaded rod to go and compress the um, the shock absorber. So you can download the plans for this in the link in the description of the video below. So we need a piece that is 42 centimeters long so we just go and mark 42 centimeters and we just go on clamp it onto the vise on the bench and proceed to cutting with a little grinder that I bought for just about 35 euros the other day. So let's get it on. There it is. Now we have the two pieces of metal, thanks to the beauty of montage and um, we need to find a spot 12 centimeters from the end where we're gonna apply a bend to recreate the shape that we're looking for. So we're gonna take the piece, put the mark in the vise and just with a little brute force we're gonna bend the piece. There we go. Voila. We repeat for the second one. So I've marked on the sheet metal the shape to create this little box, this little cage at the bottom that will hold the shock absorber in place. And to recap, we have bent these two pieces, which are going to be the side structural pieces. So, we're going to proceed with cutting it. Um, I have purchased a little hair uh, scissor thingy that is very useful, especially if you have a decent compressor. I have a crappy one, so it is going to be a pain. So, let's start this up. So we have the piece to do the cage and for the bottom of it, uh, since I want something a little stronger, we're going to use a leftover threaded bar that I had in the back of the shop, uh, which is going to constrain the bottom of the um, shock absorber. So we're going to proceed with marking about 20 centimeters, which I think is going to be plenty, uh, times two. We need two pieces, left and right, and we're going to proceed with cutting it. We're going to put it in the clamp and cutting it. I actually should wear some goggles for these works, or say don't try these at home, one of the two. 
So, let's cut this thing. Okay, so now we have almost all the pieces we need to build our compressor. Um, what we're going to do is bend this sheet so that it can, be, uh, it can become a cage. Uh, to do that, it's very simple. Um, I'm going to soon build a brake uh, to bend sheet metal, but for now that I don't have one, we're simply going to uh, go ahead and bend uh, the sheet metal on this big plate of uh, thick construction uh, metal. Uh, what we're going to do is just uh, find, uh, as you can see I've marked uh, the points where it needs to be bent. We get a square and we proceed with marking where it needs to be bent just to make sure we bend it in the right places. There we go. And we'll clamp right at the corner. We can clamp this thing right on. and we can proceed with bending it by hand. A little hammer. So, utilizing different types of scrub metal, we can continue bending the piece. For example, we have the first band. Now we can proceed with the second band. I'll use this piece of square tubing to align the piece, clamp it again. These are all pieces of scrap metal that I've used that are left over from previous projects. Once this is nicely clamped, you can proceed with bending the next piece, a little hammer, of course this is not going to be a pretty, a pretty piece, um, this is just a working tool so we're not really caring if the part comes out as pretty as we would like. Here is the second bend and we'll proceed with this system to bend the rest of the structure. Okay, so we have bent the box uh, to make the cage, so now we're going to weld it along the seam. To weld it, I'm using a little MIG welder, um, nothing too expensive, around 300 bucks, uh, because the sheet metal is too thin to use the stick welder, which we'll, we'll be using uh, for the other welds. So we're going to proceed with welding the seam um, in, the, in the cage and then we'll weld it to the support parts. So, let's get started! Okay, so now I welded the box, although it's not the prettiest weld, we don't really care because it's not an object that anybody will ever see, 
but the box is now one single piece and we have to proceed with bending these two pieces to wrap around so that they will allow for the shock absorber to go inside like this and be held in place while the upper screw compresses it. So these need to be really good welds. That's why we're going to use these uh, thicker pieces and the stick welder that has uh, more power than the MIG welder when it comes to thicker materials. So let's proceed with bending these two rods. We mark the point where they need to be bent like so. I'm sure you guys can find a better way of doing this but since they're pretty much the same we just take them stick them in the vise and bend them again with brute force there we go so I started thinking to use these two uh, threaded bars to do the retainers on the bottom but while bending one of them actually broke because of all the threads that make it so they're easily breakable. Now I've decided to use this piece of leftover bracket um, to do the retainer on the bottom so we're gonna go for the same procedure we're gonna mark the bottom where it needs to be bent and we're gonna proceed with bending it in the vise like this clamp on the vise and bend uh, with a little force there you go easy enough with a little manhandling will fit on top of the box. This will stop this from traveling any lower than it has to while it's being compressed. There you go. The advantage of having a metal tabletop and such a rugged one um, is that you can just hook up your ground for your welder to it and anything really leaning on it will be uh, put to ground so you gotta be very careful on the other hand that if you touch this and you touch the electrode you will be uh, flashed and burn up in flames so being careful about that we're gonna tuck this uh, two bracket in place using a stick welder and some protection for your eyes. All right, let's proceed with this side first. Uh, I'm gonna use a pair of pliers to keep everything in position. Let's go. to weld the top bolt to uh, the top of the two side structures which is uh, a little tedious I actually prepared uh, the end with a little angle on the bench grinder so that it would be a little bit easier but the pain in the ass is that when you hit up the bolt and the structure they all bend and they go out of alignment and this would be good if it was kind of perpendicular to the old structure so we're gonna try to weld that in place onto the bolt with the stick welder so let's go ahead and do that um, you might end up having to do it a couple of times so uh, I might end up having to do it a couple of times I'm no expert at this but I do try let's go Just forget 
to have come out really good maybe a little wide but I'm sure that with a little force we'll be able to straighten things out you see just a little bit so we have done the little thingy that goes on top the structure that goes on top now we have to weld it to the box nice and sturdy and to do that, we're probably going to use the vise to hold everything in place. And we're just going to weld the box at the end of the support struts. Let's do that. pieces we need to do is the piston that will push onto the um, shock absorber to compress it and we're gonna do that out of this threaded bar that we're now gonna cut to length let's do that So here it is, not the most beautiful thing in the world, but serves its purpose. All we have to do now is weld the top bolt um, on top so we have something that we can use to wrench this thing down and uh, we're done. So let's proceed with that thing. So, the piece is all welded now, the bolt onto the threaded rod. All we need to do is to sand down the edge to make it fit inside this hole. So, let's do that. Check your place in history and what you're doing. So now we're finally ready to bolt on the rod onto the structure. There we go. We have to go past the sand part to get it in nicely. I know it takes some time, but what you're gonna do? It's a free tool, so a little effort doesn't hurt. All right, so. We have screwed the piston in, we have to place the shock absorber in position, we go down, we add a little grease on this so that we don't ruin it while we spin it, and we continue going down until we engage the screw with the rod of the shock absorber. 
then all we do is get a pair of pliers and start spinning so that we can compress the shock absorber. We go down a little bit until we expose the ring that we have to remove to set the upper part of the shock absorber free. And there we go. Now that the shock is compressed, we have access to the pin and with the use of a, a little screwdriver, all we need to do is pop it out and there you go. The retainer is out. Now all we need to do is uncompress the shock absorber and uh, open it up and that's, that's it. So now that the pin is removed, all we need to do is decompress the shock absorber as you can see now this plate is coming out from the casing it would have stopped onto the retaining ring but now it's all coming out we're at the point where we can proceed by hand all we need to do is remove the shock absorber from the tool and now we can remove the piston and reveal the spring. Tune in next time to figure out why we did this. I'll give you a couple of tricks that are very interesting. In the meantime please uh, like our video, share it with your friends and send us a lot of comments. They're always welcome. For now that's it from uh, Roma Custom Bike. My name is Chaz and I'll see you next time.